The interesting news is that because Madiba has been found, some of you may be aware of the fact that he did catch a domestic dog that had broken into the reserve. It was a few days ago, and the large risk that domestic dogs carry in this area is rabies. And just the, the very brief interaction that Madiba had with that domestic dog, he caught it and carried it up into a tree. Actually, it didn't kill the dog, um, but carried it up into a tree. The dog was playing dead, but in the process of catching it and biting onto it, it could well have contracted rabies had that dog have had rabies. Now, the dog has been sent off. It was exterminated, and it has been sent off for rabies tests. And in the meantime, though, rather than waiting for those tests to come back, the Sabi Sands Viltain, which is the operation that runs the, the entire Sabi Sands Reserve, and the vets within this organization have decided to inoculate him against rabies. And that is actually going to be done this evening. And it's something that we thought we would actually like to try and share with you. It's something bizarre. It's something that I've never seen happen. So you will be seeing something potentially that I've never seen before. And basically what they're going to do is they've got a, a, a dart with the rabies inoculation and they will shoot it into Madiba's bottom in all likelihood. Well, that's where they're hoping to be aiming. And the dart will self-inject. So upon impact, it injects the inoculation. And in all likelihood, Madiba will then irritatedly pull or scratch the dart out. Or within 45 minutes, it got a self-releasing mechanism. So it pops out of the leopard. Of course, just like when we get an injection, Madiba is going to get a little bit of a fright, so we could expect him to possibly pounce, so or who knows, maybe he'll just look around and act like nothing's never happened. But we've got to remember that it's critical that this does happen. If he is not inoculated, and that dog was rabies, or was rabid, and he gets rabies, he too will have to be shot. And that, of course, is the last thing we want. And we need to send you across there now, so be ready for some action. We don't know what's going to happen, but it is highly necessary See you later. Okay, everybody. Um, we've been given permission to film Sandila having his inoculation. He's going to be inoculated now. So I'm going to be very quiet and you're just going to watch. Go for it, Edwin. So just keep an eye on the leopard. He will run. He will probably run. It will sting him. So it won't be very nice for him. But don't worry, he will be fine. I'm just going to be very quiet. He's definitely quite suspicious. There's a dart gun sticking out of the other vehicle. Do you copy? 
It's a miracle, everybody. There is a working radio connection. This is great news. So you can now talk to me on the Twitter. Liam's going to keep his camera trained on the Leopard. Uh, the Sabi Sands guys are just going out to try and reload the dart gun, which is being recalcitrant. It's a very complex piece of equipment. about zero out of five. Are you getting her at all? Two out of five. Mm -hmm. What's she saying? Don't know. And, uh, <laughs> and it got the, the end and the east pass. <laughs> okay, everybody. Nikki, I can't hear you. Uh, Sandila's little ears are, are bent down like that because there seem to be um, some Franklins knocking about the place. I also think there is a buffalo or two the other side of that other vehicle. There's another vehicle in the sighting. And there seems to be a, a buffalo there, and so he's just got his ears in that kind of stalk mode. Nikki, if you want to talk with me, WhatsApp's the way to go, I'm afraid. <laughs> or you can phone. So it was a bit of an anticlimax. I did hear a little kind of <laughs> from the back, from the, from the, uh, the dart gun. Uh, and clearly it wasn't uh, functioning as it should. Now what we don't want is for him to get up and move. They do need daylight to do it, so if it becomes dark, uh, I think they'll probably try again tomorrow. So the Sabi Sands has just reversed out. You can he perhaps hear the sound of their engine. They're just trying to fix it up. Interesting question from Barb G. Who applies the bow? No, I'm sorry, from Lynn. The Barb, we got to. If darting will change his view on people and vehicles. Uh, Lynn, it might very briefly. I don't know that he'll associate the sting that he's going to get on his rump uh, with the vehicle. He might. Uh, but I don't think it's going to. It won't affect him in the long term. I think he'll forget about it pretty quickly. Maybe tomorrow he'll be a little bit nervous and we'll have to approach him a bit more carefully. But I don't think that there will be a huge uh, difference. There is an image from Nicola coming through. I don't know what on earth it says, um, but I'm waiting for it. In the meanwhile, what a privilege to spend yet more time with magnificent little Cindyla. feel better. Isabella, leopards don't like band-aids, you know, they're so clever at healing themselves that it just doesn't really hurt them and, and enough for to warrant us putting a band-aid on. And they've also got fur, of course, and that means that a band-aid really won't stick very well, even if we could get close enough to put a band-aid on him. And then Elise in Colorado, are leopards inoculated uh, for rabies and other diseases routinely, or is it only uh, after they've been possibly exposed. Uh, Elise, it's own, Elise, it's only after a possible exposure. It's not done routinely. We try and interfere as little as possible with all of the animals in the bush here. It's only when there's an anthropogenic uh, harm done, and obviously a domestic dog is, would be considered an anthropogenic effect or an anthropogenic threat to an animal, and that is why they are um, basic. That's why they're going to inoculate him. It is possible that some leopards eat domestic dog, we don't see it, um, and that is an absolute worry, and certainly it's possible, and certainly with a, you know, the leopard you saw, some of you would have seen that Sindila uh, pulled that dog up into the top of a tree, and, you know, so it was, became pretty obvious, and the leopards we see quite a lot. With a lion, though, I wonder what he's, he's definitely spotted something, maybe a squirrel, or a diker, or maybe another Franklin, but what leopards definitely do, at least 
that's what lions definitely do is that if they caught a domestic dog they would devour it in seconds and you wouldn't know and so that is a worry there's leopard you know because we spend so much time with them and they eat a little more slowly uh, chances are you'd find them with the dog but lions that happen so fast still waiting there's clearly some problem with the dark gun so I don't think we'll wait for too much longer because if we do have to it's going to get dark and that's obviously going to be an issue they won't shoot him during the dark and by shoot I mean dart everybody don't worry because the op oh look he's gonna looks like he's gonna try and stalk something is there Franklin is there Franklin can see a Franklin just, there they are little crested Franklins making their way off I've seen Franklins walk right up to this leopard he just looks at them others have been there obviously made dinner of and this other fellow is going to leave whether or not they get the dark gun to work I don't know but we'll hang around and just see what they do um, I think it's well worth our while and even if you have to go back to Karula um, I of course won't know if you've gone back to Karula you may be back with them now um, but if you, uh, if, if you if you if you do go back to Karula, we are recording and we'll definitely make sure to show you on a highlights reel if and when this uh, great event occurs. Here they come, they're coming back. They may, of course, just go straight past because they don't. No, they're coming back in. Now what this fellow is going to do, I couldn't tell you. But there's another car driving past us. That's why you're having to stare down my left ear. Thank you for that, Fian. I hope I've cleaned it. Cleanish. There we go. Right, so that car's leaving. We're going to put our sights back on magnificent little Sindila, and the Sabi Sands guys will come back in now. with which that other chap is leaving is not helping the matter at all. And now he stopped to have an enormous chat. Anyway, here we go. Action stations, everybody. Okay, Nikki has asked for a link to Karula, but I think they're about to try and dart him again, so we're going to stay here. I'm not sure if you are live or if you are not live. I couldn't begin to tell you at this stage. I suspect these guys are going to drive around the back of him so that they can get at his backside. Okay, I'm just going to move 
back a little bit. We can't put a view of him. running now. Okay, everybody, that's it for us, I'm afraid. We're going to just, you can see his spots there. I can't see if it's hitting or not. We're going to have a quick look and see. Okay. I don't see anything in his right hand side. Okay. Any luck? He's just gone round the side. Everybody, we're going to hand you back to Scott now. We may try and help these guys find him again, um, but I don't think we need to uh, drag you around for the ride. If anything else exciting happens, we will record it and we'll send it over to you. So we're going to go across to Scott now, and I'll keep you posted. Very exciting afternoon. Uh, I think they did miss, unfortunately. It's very difficult to shoot with those things. Uh, we'll see you just now. Is that good for you, Bill? Sardonic OK, says Viam. Right, so let me just explain what happened. So we were in that sighting. You saw exactly that Sandelia was sitting on top of the termite mound. And for those of you who have just tuned in and are perhaps confused, he's no longer Madiba. It's all a very confusing, rather ego-driven process. Uh, we're going to stick with our name, Sandelia. That's a much better name, I think, anyway. Now, what happened was he was lying on the termite mound. The Sabi Sands came into the area and um, he was lying perfectly actually his bottom was exposed and what she did uh, Candace this is the um, ecologist from the Sabi Sands she stuck the dart gun out of the window and she fired and unfortunately what happened with the first dart is that it hit a stick on its way through and that flipped it up and that's why it didn't hit it just went over the top of him and hit the termite something hit the termite mound behind him but the dart itself fell off and it immediately expelled its rabicin or anti-rabies vaccine and Sindila got a fright he didn't actually he didn't feel anything he got a fright he looked up he obviously shot up like a scalded cat ran and then he stopped and he looked and I'll tell you the difference between when when he was actually hit with it compared with his reaction there so then he walked off and he was a little bit suspicious but not too bad and then he went around the corner through a little drainage line and he lay down um, and we then went around with uh, the other vehicle, with the Sabi Sands guys, and unfortunately we couldn't get a very clear shot of him being shot. <laughs> and we did see him, that we saw that we heard the shot going and then we saw the leopard explode from where he was sitting and he disappeared off into the bush. So the second shot was completely successful. Now what happens with that dart is it's got a little gel cap on it. And either Cindy and the, the Rabison would have been immediately expelled as it hit him uh, because there's a special um, plunger in it. And what would have happened is that the, he, he would have then bite it out, or um, what would happen is that the gentle gel cap will disintegrate and the dart will fall out and he will be unharmed. Now, he will have to be redone if that dog is found to be rabid and we don't know if it is or not but we'll keep you posted but a successful day for Sandile. So that was a marvellous drive wasn't it? Beautiful Karula, thank you to Karula uh, for, all, for taking the bulk of the drive. A 